If you're using additional tools to manage your Macs, well, now you don't have to. Microsoft Intune now has built-in native controls so that you can comprehensively manage your Macs, similar to how you manage your Windows PCs across the device lifecycle. And importantly, this is all without third-party integrations or extensions that you might be using right now, which means a lot less complexity and overhead, along with increased security across the board as part of achieving your zero trust goals. In fact, I'll walk you through some of the highlights from automated device enrollment into management to configure settings and install required apps, the new Entra ID-based single sign-on experience to apps and web services for seamless and secure access after sign-in, how we've extended configuration management controls to more settings, even day zero features as they're announced for more granular manageability, how we now support common DMG and PKG app package types, and can keep your Macs up to date using new declarative device management DDM controls. And finally, how upcoming capabilities with the Intune suite will work using remote help for Mac OS. Let me show you how you'd light up these configurations as an admin, as well as the experiences that users will see on their Macs, and we'll start with device enrollment. So Intune supports both user-initiated enrollment using Intune's company portal for manual enrollment and automated device enrollment. This leverages Apple's business or school manager to enroll devices into Intune to enforce required settings and install apps with users just needing to authenticate on devices during setup. To get started using public keys from Intune and Apple's management infrastructure, you can establish trust between both services. And from there, you can manage your Mac OS devices directly from Intune. With the prerequisites in place, the management process starts by creating an enrollment profile using Intune. So here I'm going to create a new profile and I'll give it a name, Lab Tech Mac Enrollment. And you'll see two options, either without user affinity for a shared or kiosk device or with user affinity for a user assigned device. So I'll choose that one. Next, you can decide how users will authenticate on their devices with Setup Assistant Legacy or Setup Assistant with Modern Authentication. Now, the latter is the recommended option to support more secure multi-factor and passwordless authentication, so I'll choose that. Now, this is going to simplify the MFA experience and also reduce password reuse and also helps limit password reset support calls. Then, using the locked enrollment option, you can choose if users are allowed to delete the management profile or not. So I'm going to opt for locked enrollment. So from here, you can customize what users will see with a department name, so I'll add one and a phone number. Then you can decide what screens you'd like to show or hide when users set up their device. So I'll use the toggle all button to hide everything. Then I can review and create, and now I have all the basics in place for a simple device setup. And I've also configured a few required settings and apps that I'll show you in a moment. But first, let me show you the user experience setting up the Mac, and if you're familiar with autopilot deployment for Windows, this is a similar experience for Mac OS devices. So when the device is turned on, the Apple Setup Assistant runs automatically. It starts with selecting a preferred language, then a country or region, there we go. Next, I'll choose the Wi-Fi network, then I'll input its password. Now at that point, the user is notified that the device will be enrolled into remote management. Next, they'll need to input their Microsoft Work or School account with username and then authenticate. Now this process is managed by Entra ID and this account is set up for passwordless authentication. From there, you'll create a local computer account as you normally would. And we're working also on removing this step too so that you can configure this in advance using Intune. At that point, the device enrollment into Intune starts. And when that completes, the device can be used with the required apps and settings that you've configured. Next, with Intune's company portal now on the device, it requests one more registration step and once you sign in with a Microsoft Work or School account, this will kick off Microsoft Entra Join to link it with Intune. With that, we've enabled conditional access and now even single sign-on or SSO for seamless access to services using an Entra ID account. So from now on, if the user logs out like you're seeing right now, then logs back in, the device level login will be valid for other Microsoft Work or School account apps and sites. For example, now when the user launches an app like Microsoft Word, it will populate their email and automatically authenticate. And this works across apps supporting Microsoft authentication libraries or MSOL. 
So Safari and Edge browsers, for example, both work with MSOL. So when you launch Safari and go to Microsoft365.com and select Sign In with SSO enabled, you're taken right to your Microsoft 365 homepage. Because of pre-existing policies, Intune in this case also installed a few required apps. Of course, you can install others based on your own policies, and I'll show you that in a moment. So next, with the device in a managed state, you can see the company portal and Microsoft Word apps were installed during initial enrollment. And as you assign additional apps via Intune, these will get installed automatically, even PKG and DMG packaged apps, like you're seeing here with Adobe Acrobat Reader and Visual Studio Code. Again, more on that in a second. So now I've shown you the device enrollment experience and a few of the configurations you'd notice as a user. Let's move on to the device configuration for admins. Much of what you saw can be configured prior to creating the enrollment profile. So under our devices Mac OS in the Intune Admin Center, you'll find configuration profiles. When you create a new profile, you'll select the profile type and can choose from the settings catalog or from templates. Templates are nice because they contain groups of settings by functionality, and you can see here there are options to get started quickly. So now if you have existing settings that you want to bring into Intune, you can use the custom option in templates to upload the XML setting files that you would have authored using the Apple Configurator or Profile Manager. In my case, I'm going to go back and I'll use the settings catalog to create my profile. So I'll give it a name, and then in the catalog itself, I can add settings. Now here, as I scroll down the categories on the right, you can see we've got lots of granular settings to choose from. As you can see, you can get super specific with these native controls. So if you're used to things like Windows settings using ADMX back policies, you'll notice a lot of similarities here. From there, you can scope the profile to the devices and users that you want and create it. And as mentioned, when new settings are published by Apple, Intune will automatically reflect those. And before we leave configuration profiles, something brand new is declarative device management or DDM support for software updates where instead of waiting for MDM policy pushes, the local device can autonomously detect that it needs an update and proactively request it. So here's a first look at an example of a configuration profile using declarative device management to deliver an OS version update. And now if you look at the managed Mac that's scoped for this profile, you'll see that in device declarations that version 14 is required by the date that we set. And we can either stick to that date and that schedule or manually kick off the update. So next, let's move on to Intune security settings. So here, enforcing Mac OS device compliance can ensure that the required security configurations are in place. And this is done using compliance policies. So for example, you can require that your managed devices have things like system integrity protection configured to gate access to your resources. You can require certain OS version and build levels. You can make password policy settings and set device encryption requirements using FileVault, firewall, and connection settings, as well as gatekeeper controls to only allow app installation from defined locations. And if a device is found to be non-compliant, you can automatically notify that user via email, remotely lock the device, or add it to the device retire list. At this point, with your Mac OS devices fully configured, along with policies for compliance, the next thing to take care of are the apps that you distribute to your managed devices. And this is another benefit of having a management agent for Mac OS, because Intune now goes beyond the App Store, as I mentioned, you can distribute and install standalone DMG and PKG app packages. So let me show you how that works. So under Apps Mac OS, when you add a new app, you can choose between Microsoft apps where the packages are ready to go and in the cloud, and you can also upload local native DMG and PKG files no need to repackage or wrap them. In fact, here you can see a VS Code DMG package has already been added. And if you're used to Windows management, DMG files are disk image files, kind of like ISOs, and PKG files have additional installation options, kind of like MSI files work in Windows. So I'm going to add another app here, a PKG file this time, and we'll confirm, and then navigate to my app package and hit OK. From there, I'll add Adobe as the publisher, and optionally, you can add the category like productivity and additional details that users will see in the company portal. So I'll select the minimum OS version, in my case, Monterey. And Intune will parse what you upload and list out any contained packages within the parent package. Then in assignments, I can scope the users or devices, in this case, required to have this app. So 
I'll add my group, lab techs. Then I just need to review and create. Now my app will automatically install on machines in that group. So now up until this point, everything I've shown you in the Intune Admin Center and on the Mac are part of Microsoft 365 E3 and E5 to deploy new devices and keep existing ones compliant with the right settings and apps. That said, there's even more that you can do by adding Intune Suite capabilities, which is continually evolving across managed platforms. For example, to help with end user support calls, something else coming soon for Mac OS as part of the Intune Suite add-on is remote help for Mac OS. What you're seeing here is the initiation a helper would take to start a remote session with a user running Mac OS. Once they're connected, the helper can see what the user sees on their screen and help them remotely. So that was an overview of built-in native controls that you can use to comprehensively manage your Macs, similar to how you manage your Windows PCs across the device lifecycle. To learn more, check out aka.ms slash Intune for Mac, and keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest updates, and thanks so much for watching. <laughs>